Hi, everybody, and welcome to a, another episode of a Sunday Sermon on Monday. I'm Danny Bader, just dropping in. You know, the gospel this week, um, second Sunday of Lent, is pretty heavy. And here it is, Gospel of Luke. Jesus took Peter, John, and James and went up to the mountain to pray. While he was praying, his face changed in appearance, and his clothing became dazzling white. And behold, two men who were conversing with him, Moses and Elijah who appeared in glory and spoke of his exodus that he was going to accomplish in Jerusalem. Peter and his companions had been overcome by sleep, but becoming fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men standing next to him. As they were about to part from him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it's good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. But he did not know what he was saying. While he was speaking, a cloud came and cast a shadow over them, and they became frightened when they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my chosen son, listen to him. After the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. They fell silent and did not at that time tell anyone what they had seen. So pretty powerful. And what um, connected for me in this is, you know, Jesus' appearance um, changing um, to that dazzling white. That, that energy that, you know, when we think about light and we think about brightness, that's all good, right? That's love and that's, that's a good energy. And a lot of times in paintings, we see Jesus with the halo over top, right? Depicted, which is that light, that energy. So this week, I would encourage you to think about what color is your aura? And aura is defined as the distinctive atmosphere or quality that seems to surround and be generated by a person, thing, or a place. So that aura, you know, a lot of times people will say, you know, when somebody walks into a room, they go, well, that person has a really good aura. Um, you know, they have good energy. And for me in the gospel, that's what this was, right? Jesus was emanating his, his wonderful, beautiful love energy. You know, this dazzling white um, came over. So I think about a story when I met this guy years and years ago in um, Colorado Springs. I was out there doing a workshop. I shared my sport story a little bit about my near-death experience. And this guy comes up to me at lunchtime. Really cool guy. And he says, you know, um, I had a similar experience to you. And I said, okay, yeah, you know, you want to share it with me? And he said, yes. He said he was in a horrible motorcycle accident. A uh, motorist didn't see him and just plowed into him. He flew off the motorcycle 30, 40 feet or whatever. Broke almost every bone in his body. Um flatlined a few times and was in a coma for a long, long time. So we shared our experience, both of, of what we did experience during those times and that journey back, right? How, how do we kind of get back to life and engaged? And he said to me, he said, after that accident, did anything change for you? Was anything different when you came back? And I thought about it and I said, well, I guess the one main thing that changed is I always believed that there was a heaven that when our body stops, there's a part of us, a soul, spirit, that continues on. I always believed that, and now I know that to be true. So that was one of the big changes for me. So I said to him, you know, what about you? Any, anything change for you? And he said, yes. He said, I can see people's aura. I can see the energy around their body. And I was like, wow, that's pretty interesting. Tell me more. And he said, yeah, it usually ranges from a very, very bright white, which is why this reminded me today from the gospel. To, to black. And I said, well, you know, that's cool. I said, have you ever seen like a bright, bright white? And he said, yeah, I've only seen one, you know, this woman. And I was just drawn to her and she just had, I didn't even know her. You could just tell she was so full of love and caring and understanding and peace and joy and all these things. He said, it was really cool just to kind of be in her presence. And then I asked, you know, to the other side, I said, have you ever seen somebody with that black? And he said, uh, yeah, I've seen a few people. He said, I remember this one guy, I walked into a party and this guy's aura was just full on black. And he said, I just didn't feel good at all. It was just like pure evil and nastiness and, and everything else. And I'm, I'm just sitting there, you know, you never talk to somebody that I never did that had this experience. And so I said to him, um, after an awkward pause, I said, uh, what about me? And no sooner was this question out of my mouth than I'm saying to myself, what are you doing? 
That's the dumbest thing in the world. Just say goodbye to this guy. Get out of there. You don't need to know what color your aura is. And he smiled and he looked at me and he, he probably saw some of my discomfort. And he looked and he said, it's all good. You're, you're very, very light gray. And I went, whew, that's good. So here's what I think about aura. You know, if somebody could see yours, what color is it? What color do you want it to be? And I got no judgment in this. I just thought it was kind of interesting. So here's a little exercise for you. Here's how I do it. There are fruits of the Holy Spirit, right? We've got this down in our kitchen. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, right? The fruits of the Holy Spirit. And the way I look at it is, if I, if you live your life in your actions connected to those, right? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, self-control, gentleness, faithfulness. When we can give ourselves a really good score that we're living into all of those, I got to think that our aura is near that white, up towards that light gray and that white. So the exercise for you, if you want, is just to kind of reflect on those words there, the fruits of the Holy Spirit, and think about where you are and maybe which one or two do you have an opportunity to live more into, right? To act more from that place. I think, uh, I think you'll be glad you did. So yeah, that's great. That wall art, I love it. I give it to, um, anytime I go to a wedding now, I give it to the, the, the couple that's getting married and, and offer to them, you know, hang that in your house somewhere and focus on that. Focus on those fruits of the Holy Spirit because they will keep you good, strong. They'll keep your relationship good and strong. Um, it will help you come back when you're struggling in your relationship. You know, you give them an envelope too, right? At the weddings, we got to do an envelope with a little check in there or a, I guess we're doing, a, you know, PayPal and Venmo and all this other crazy stuff anymore. Um, but anyhow, I would just, I would encourage you to reflect on that. You know, we all have that energy that emanates from us. And I don't know about you, but I have certainly have an opportunity to, to continue to grow that and make it a stronger, more loving, more caring, um, more fun, more joyful energy. So you're off into your week. Have a good one. Until next time, I love you. Say a prayer for me and I will say one for you.